Got the structure. This the thin layer on the outside that is darker is known as renal capsule. Renal capsule. All right? Now, the renal capsule prevents from the infection. And then you have this structure right over here, which is, you can see it all the way in here. And this model is a little bit better because it's all uniform in color. So all this uh, kind of like a superficial structure, these are called cortex, cortex. And this part right over here is called medulla. The medulla is the pinkish color in here. And again, it's called sometimes medullary pyramid because it looks like pyramid. But when you slice it uh, in a mid-sagittal cut, then you can see as a triangular shape. At the tip of the pyramid lies the papilla of the medulla or medullary papilla right over here. So as the urine starts forming and going through these nephrons, it empties in here. The next structure happened to be the minor calyx. These are these spaces in here. Minor calyx has a small diameter. It's number 11 is minor calyx. This one right here, minor calyx. This one right here, another minor calyx. So urine forms, goes into this opening, minor calyx, then goes into the bigger diameter. In other words, Two of the minor calyx, they join in the major calyx. See this one? Minor calyx, minor calyx, now major calyx. Major calyx has bigger diameter. Many of the major calyx, they go and they go and they become a, a funnel shaped structure known as a renal pelvis. This is a renal pelvis. Look how funnel shape it is. A renal pelvis, then it goes out of the kidneys into the ureter ureter, all right? So same thing in here, this is the renal pelvis, and here is the ureter, okay? So this is structure, one of these structure right here have been expanded, and you're going to see only one of the pyramids in here. So again, you'll see the nephrons in the white, you'll see the papilla, and this space is gotta be this one right here, which is minor calyx. All right, next up, we wanted to go over the blood vessels. These two models offer pretty good uh, blood vessels. So we started from the renal arteries. Once it's a split, becomes segmental artery. So these are segmental artery, these are segmental artery. Renal artery, segmental artery. Then it's split into the uh, lobar artery. Then it split into interlobal artery. So you could see lobal artery, and then it splits into interlobal artery. Then it goes and becomes kind of like in the junction where the medulla and the cortex is. This, they go into the same. See right over here is the cortex. All this area is cortex. This is the medulla. You see, these are all arcuate arteries and arcuate vein. All right, off of the arcuate arteries, it goes upwards. This one that goes upwards, kind of like a perpendicular to that, is called interlobular artery, interlobular artery. And then interlobular artery goes into the glomerulus, but what is leading to the glomerulus right here is the afferent arteriole. But it comes out, that is called efferent arteriole. So we go ahead and take a look at this a small section in uh, enlarging it. You see afferent arteriole, you see efferent arteriole. The way that you could tell, you have to look at the diameter. Afferent arteriole always have bigger diameter than efferent arteriole. Furthermore, afferent arteriole leads to the glomerulus. These are the glomerulus. Glomerulus means ball of capillary. All this is structure. Now, these are fenestrated capillary, so you could see down here, if you get close up, you might be able to see tiny little pores in there, tiny little holes. Those are called fenestrated capillaries. All right, embedded on top of these, you can see the parasites. These are parasites. The parasites, uh, kind of like my fingers, as I told you earlier, you know, they're not covering 100% next to one another. You see filtration slits right here. These lines representing filtration slits. So what comes inside of the blood, all the small things like water, ion, things like that, they're coming out into this area right here. That is the Bowman capsule. Bowman capsule. 
they're coming out of the fenestrated capillaries, out of these filtration slit. Now they are inside of the Bowman capsule. Together, they're known as a renal corpuscle. Bowman capsule plus the uh, glomerulus. Together, they're known as renal corpuscle. Glomerulus plus Bowman capsule. Renal corpuscle. Now, the very first part where most of the reabsorption takes place, this is a PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule can be observed in here too. See, it's coming out of this. This is a proximal convoluted tubule right here. It's not a straight, it's convoluted. Then you go to the loop of Henle. So the one that is going down is descending. The one that is going up, ascending. Again, how do you know which is which? A start from the Bowman capsule, the one that is connected to PCT is the descending. And then continue is going to go ascending and connects to the distal convoluted tubule. This is called distal convoluted tubule. Distal convoluted tubule reach the collecting duct. These are the collecting duct. And again, the end of the collecting duct goes into the tip of the papilla. We mentioned this. All right? So, these are the part of the nephron. So one more time, we got the Bowman capsule, PCT, proximal convoluted tubule, descending loop of Henle, ascending loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. But let's go back in the descending uh, distal convoluted tubule. Look how close it is to the Bowman capsule, but they're not really connected. They're very close to one another. So if you can picture this one as a Bowman capsule, this one as a proximal convoluted tubule, and imagine that it's a tube going down inside of this table, and then it's coming back up, it's coming back up here. And this is very close to this region, you guys. And therefore, this gotta be the distal convoluted tubule. You have to think three-dimensionally. All right. Now, going back over here, this part that is going in, we said is afferent, is bigger diameter. This part that is going out is the efferent. Then what happens? Then it goes and surrounds the, uh, the collecting duct and all the other region and so on. These are called peritubular capillaries. So from here, afferent arteriole, efferent arteriole, these are the peritubular capillary that is being cut. In reality, they're going to go around the nephrons. All right, next up. Um, we need to talk about some parts that we missed out. So let's go back. So uh, we went over the nephron, different parts and different blood vessels. Let's go back over here. Between the renal pyramids lies a uh, renal column. So this structure right here is called renal column. This is another renal column. I'm not talking about the blood. I'm just talking about the structure right here. This is called renal column. I think we skipped that. We didn't cover it. Um, this is the adrenal gland. This is adrenal gland. Now, there are two types of nephron. One is shorter, and we have a, a lot more numerous. About 85% of the nephron are this kind. These are called the 